So I connected to the power and after some time it made a kind of a funny sound and a beep or actually a beep and then a funny sound but I was not recording it so I apologize. apologize. Let's open the lid and see what we have. Okay, the screen is heavy. Oh, actually the screen is very nice. Uh, and it's telling me that my backup battery is very low or missing. But, well, we can leave it flat for now. It's probably uh, that's round CR, whatever, 20, whatever battery. And I think I have a spare one here, so that should not be a very big deal. Let's reposition the camera and record the experience. The screen is very slow, it's a passive matrix screen, but it should be okay. They even made the cursor a bit bold, so you can, you can actually see what's around. But well, I suppose that a new computer will not have the backup battery warning running, so we can dismiss that. So Windows C would greet you with a welcome screen, and we're gonna now do the following, set correct date and time on the name and address information. Now you can follow the structure. So click to continue, press enter. So click to continue. Uh, all right, well, date and time will not matter, but C is set to 1999. So we can leave it like that. Date and time as well, it's not going to save anyway. You can choose a visiting city. There's option set up alarms. Uh -huh. And some options here. Uh, normal numerals. I don't know what that would do, but whatever. We're good. We we'll press OK. And on the property, so I can put my name, my address, company information. Write some notes here that I can put to show when the system is turned on. Auto identification. Okay, I can use that. And I can just write for now it's not gonna save anyway because well, there's no backup battery and Windows C keeps everything in RAM. Awesome computer. I want to see the note when it's on. We do OK and let's see. Setups are complete. I can learn more about the user's guide or online help to access help. I can go to start and help, classic Windows, or choose the interrogation mark button in the upper right corner of a program window. Windows used to have used to have that and I actually really miss it. Sometimes you're configuring something, I want to see more details, you could click that and then choose the option it would give you a better explanation of what was going on, but this doesn't have it. I can click done and start using my device. Alright, I'm a bit disappointed now here because I really wanted to have uh, the interface that looks like Windows uh, 2000 and this one doesn't. It looks like Windows 98 and I really hated this recycled bling. I would rather have it looking like Windows 95. But the desktop is really well organized, so we have here my handheld PC, my documents, recycle bin, Internet Explorer looks like IE5, I would say. Some compact utilities, then here in Box Canada Contacts Task, some fax application, Network Explorer, there's probably some Samba or I don't know, Cool Calk, Audible Player, then we have Word, Excel, Access, and PowerPoint, and I'm gonna be reviewing these applications thoroughly as we go in future videos. Windows 98 style, back to desktop icon, clock, and there's battery status here. There's no pop-up information as I can see. Some warning about the backup battery. This looks like a backup battery right here. The CR20 whatever, 2032 battery. There's probably synchronization. And then the start menu. If you go to start, Windows 95 style, but with the small characters in programs, you have a bunch of options here, accessories, Citrix, so we can run applications remotely, probably outdated, well, for sure very outdated, for communication, PC link, networking, a terminal, 
some travel safe application games, solitaire of course, office, access, excel, powerpoint and word, in pocket editions, outlook, calendar contacts, inboxing tasks in separate applications, all the player, the compact utilities, the school clock, a fax application, Internet Explorer, Network Explorer and Windows Explorer. Alright, I'm gonna cut this video now and we're gonna explore this one by one. Alright, so after running the setup wizards, we have here this the keyboard, not the keyboard, the desktop. Of course the backup battery is very low because it's around 20 years old. But I'll replace it, so well the system is gonna keep bothering me often with this message probably because in Windows CE if you don't have a proper backup battery running and you run out of battery what happens is that all your documents are done. So the default icon arrangement is actually very pretty so you have on the left the classic Windows desktop so my handheld PC instead of my computer a shortcut to my documents so that would be actually your user profile folder the recycle bin. I was hoping that this being Windows CE 3 I would get the Windows 2000 style bin and actually the Windows 98 one is the ugliest. IE, the icon is actually for IE 4 or 5 maybe but I think this is IE 3. Then you have compact utilities probably you know manufacturer drivers and so on and uh, in the middle you have basically Outlook tools and it's four separate applications instead of a single Outlook application like you see here go to properties the shortcut points to you yes so we have a separate address book application and look at this the application is 38 kilobytes these were the good old times where programmers actually had to put some effort then you have communication tools here network explorer a fax application, this has a model so you can send and receive faxes a Q calculator Audible player I think Audible is still around so I'm actually going to try and see if this actually works then you have Pocket Office, Pocket Word, Pocket Excel, Pocket Access and Pocket PowerPoint at this point in time Microsoft had not yet repositioned Windows CE as a embedded solution real-time OS um, operating system but as a full capable operating system right a standalone OS for uh, consumers consumers yeah whatever uh, so here later on you get pocket vi uh, word viewer Excel viewer viewer and PowerPoint access I think access is gone but you get PowerPoint viewer but here you can actually create the documents and Excel particularly, I've heard, is very powerful, right? What do we have next? Well, the start menu, of course, with your classic look, programs, favorites, documents, settings, help, oops, and run. Then suspend. When you see devices never turn off, the RAM, the RAM is always active, so when you press suspend, the system just sleeps. Um, and actually, the sleeping performance is impressive. Uh, unlike modern devices that take, take a few seconds to wake up from sleep, in Windows CE it's instant. See? And everything is as it was. Then we have here the notification area on the bottom right. A warning that my backup battery is low, some I think it's a synchronization icon and the battery indicator. I'm connected to the outlet of course. Then here we have the clock and the minimize all buttons that on Windows 98 is close to the start button. Here is by the notification area. So let's keep exploring. If you go to my handheld PC, you're gonna notice that the window opens full screen. That's the case because Windows C was designed for initial, the initial handheld version was for these devices that had 640 by 240 screen, so wide and narrow screens, actually wide and short screens. 
and uh, so there was no reason to have multiple applications side by side so the windows don't have size control everything takes basically the full screen and unlike windows i can see here that my handheld pc is not a special window but it's just the root folder from windows explorer i think let's see Yeah, I don't even get a new window, so this is actually Windows Explorer. We have control panel, databases, and this is probably save files from access, I would say. No, this seem to be used by the application installed in the system. Let's see. Yeah. Then we get what Citrix used by the Citrix client. The compact utilities are installed in the ROM. My documents that's just a shortcut for a hand RAM drive folder, our program files, temporary folder, and the Windows folder. Let's go and see the properties of the computer. So we we'll go to properties here, you we'll get the system properties and uh, just like Windows 2000 or so, you can set up some system options here and you will see that you can choose to allocate the RAM between storage and program memory. If you are a power user, you probably have your documents in a CF card and you can then use all the RAM for programs. But if you are just running documents and so on, you can allocate it for more storage and then not worry about space. This unit supports 64 megs of RAM and I'm going to eventually get a, a SIM and install it here. Going to device, CPU type, a Super H S4 from Hitachi, 60 megs of RAM and the two expansion slots are empty. We have one internal and one external plus a PC card, PCMCIA slot that I'll use later on for a network card. Going to system you get information about the build. So we have Core System 2.11, uh, IE 3.01 and Outlook 3.01, build 19.08. Installed in ROM we have Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Access. And if we go to about that's just the copyright information. Windows CE follows the old Windows 95, 98 paradigm where you have the question mark that you can use as context help. So I could click here and choose the item and see what it does in detail. I really miss that in modern Windows. But in Windows CE, it's just going to open the help application related to this topic. So we can see the list of problems in Rome, for example. And unlike other windows, this one is smaller and you can move it around. I don't know why, because whatever else you're doing, you would take the whole, whole screen on top of it. But with help, you actually can. OK, save the changes and X just you know, will not cancel them. Will not save them. My documents is just, just a short co for, uh, cut for the uh, documents folder in the RAM disk. You have a sample access database and a sample PowerPoint presentation and then shortcut to some ink writer and office. I don't know what ink writer is. You can open and see. Ah, you can use if you would have a touch screen you could write here but this device doesn't have a touch screen. It's a traditional touchpad. The recycle bin, I hate this icon, but here it is. Double click, and just like Windows, you get to, choose, to see the original location of the file when it was deleted in the size, and you can manage it here. You can probably store, empty the recycle bin, and so on. And here you basically get only to delete items from the RAM. Internet Explorer will open IE. Old school, just basic functionality clean and easy and I wish that the interface would still be like this. You get to do what you have to do without 
too much fuss and that's just how it should always be. Do we get some internet options here? Yes, let's see. Not too much, as expected. You can, you can set up it to auto dial, use a proxy server, or look for advanced settings here. Cookies are enabled, there is caching. 10% of the RAM here, you can empty the cache, but nothing else more. Compact utilities, so these are basically tied to the hardware. A set viewer is for corporate, so you can see details about the, the machine. So, communication. You have the configuration, the first serial port, second one uh, is not in use. Then we have fast infrared at 4 megs. We have a hardware modem at 57600 BPS. There is no antenna, so no um, edge or GSM or whatever. This displays a sharp unit, 10 inch passive matrix, 800 by 600, 024 dot pitch, and it's 256 colors. And there is a VGA port. The identity of the device, you can see here, serial number and so on. Memory, so the system is 16 megs and there is nothing installed in the RAM slot. I can stop to 64 megs. There are four slots. The first one is a PC card. Then you have external internal compact flash. And this unit comes with a smart card and I'm gonna try to figure out how to use it later on. Security, I can then set, set up a system password so no one access my data. And since the data is stored in RAM, you cannot really extract the data unless you put a lot of effort and you're a really good hacker. Uh, because if you remove the RAM stick, you lose the data and probably without the smart card, the system is also gonna, not going to turn on. I'm going to explore this later. System security, system information, hardware type, model ID, the CPU runs at 128 MHz, there's a floating point unit installed, British UK unit, and it was first used in July 2nd, 1999. Version information, and that's it. Backlight is naturally backlight information. AC 100%, battery level 50. Then you have auto dimmer if you're not using it. Classic. I think here yeah, you can back up the memory contents to a PC card or compact flash and probably can configure it. Oh, you can have dual backups for you know more security. You can make a database backups of you know, the internal application databases, as I showed before. You can also enable it to be done automatically. You can reconfigure the launch keys. These are located, uh, well, instead of having an F row, you have the function keys and you can reprogram them here. Also have combinations with shift and control. Very handy. If you need to restore from backup, here's the utility for that. And travel safe, I have no idea what that is, I'm gonna have to check the documentation. But apparently it tries to dial and you know for sure the service doesn't work anymore, so alright. Then what we have here, Outlook items so we can open off them inbox calendar let's go back to the desktop contacts and tasks I guess to save memory the items are separated and I think the unit cannot by itself connect to the internet and fetch your new mail 
you have to go through uh, Active Sync, right? Maybe you can configure a new inbox, let's see. Yeah, Emap and Pop3. I could even get my own mail server running and access email from this thing, but that's for later. It will probably not support HTML as well, making it pretty useless in modern days. You can choose how much storage you're going to use. You can save all your attachments in an external card to preserve RAM. Clever and simple. The task list actually looks good. You get just the whole screen of tasks up to top to bottom and you can track them. You can probably create some yeah, categories like subfolders. There's a find option here. Um, if you go to options, yeah, not much you can do, but quite useful in itself. If you go to contacts, really simple. What can you get here? This is your normal personal information manager application. You can create a new contact here. You can probably receive the generic. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try this later. It should work with my Nokia phone. There is a standard format for this kind of contact sharing and I think it's gonna work between Symbian and Windows CE. We will try later. And the calendar looks like Outlook. <laughs> Look at this. I think up to this day the calendar switching view works the same way. And you can see that some things you just get right and you leave them like that. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. As of options, we can use Active Sync to transport mail, so we probably can send uh, invitations from here. Works fine. Down here we have Fax Plus, and I think you can even set this machine to wake up when the phone rings and receives fax for you. If you have any use for fax in this day and age, on this day and age, well, I mix prepositions a lot, but doesn't matter. You can send a fax. Let's see how. I have probably a, ah, you can probably copy and paste from a text editor and just attach a document here. It's going to transform it. I doubt it will support PDF. Well, I'll try to set up a VirtualFX account somewhere and see how it works. You can make shapes. Can I move the shapes around? Probably not. No. All right. Can I paste from some text editor? Let's see. I will open Word by pushing the shortcut key on the keyboard. Uh, test facts. Let's use the mouse, it's easier. So I copy and I paste. I can't paste. I have no idea how to send it. Um, we will try it later. I don't want to save this fax. I don't need the word anymore. Network Explorer. So, aha! Uh -huh. So, if you have a, a Windows network set, and I think it has to be still running Samba 1, you can send that broadcast and see all the computers in the network, and you can probably access shares and copy files. And here, you get something that looks like Windows Explorer for a change. You can't right-click, 
but you have access to a directory tree that doesn't expand the sub items or it does yeah that looks like Windows Explorer you can tap remote folders somehow yeah map network connection haha <laughs> I bet this is Samba 1 I will try to configure on my NAS and share and see if this will do of course first I need to get a network card yeah so it has been uh, it was written by Compaq itself not by Microsoft good one Compaq cool cock if you want to find, uh, make mathematics cool for you then you get cool cock looks like a Windows 3.1 application it probably is just recompiled and yeah you can do calculations can you do you have a scientific view no not at all messy of properties wow you can see the DLL probably the only DLL of this application you probably can create new layouts for it interesting and useless and you see this resolution you see here this is the resolution or the usual resolution for handheld PCs Microsoft initially tried I think 480 by 320 that would be around here but then when HP released the first Jornada I think they opted for 640 by 240 and it became the popular format and this is the one I was the most interested in, interested in seeing but this machine since it's new and has a big screen it's easier for me to you know show it to everyone and you know it has a full size serial port and so on and that's going to be useful for my projects but now you can see how the actual handheld PC resolution compares to this machine Audible player is going to be for podcasts and ebooks and this was probably a thing before it was a thing um, there is something in the memory and the speaker is horrible but I'm gonna try to load something later on and maybe I can still see something yeah one hour so it's for books and I can probably sync it with, with active sync and uh, yeah I think audible.com is still around but I'll try later Then you have Microsoft Office. Let's open everything. As you can see, the system is quite snappy. Everything is in the ROM and it reads to the RAM. So, really 128 MHz, very low amount of memory, but it does the job. Let's see, we have a test presentation here called Overview. We can load it. Excel. And word. Let's start with word. By the looks of it, it's the same feature set as WordPad. I think if you open WordPad on Windows 95, this is what you get: bullet points, um, numbered lists. You don't have a uh, justified alignment; just uh, central, left, and right, and a full choice of six point well five because we think it's useless. Copy, paste, cut open and save there's some basic paragraph formatting options here nothing too fancy uh, if you go to view uh, you have some options you can do a full screen mode if you're writing and this is terrific now you're focused on your text and nothing else and if you have a small size screen like the usual handheld PC then you get a bit more of space uh, this is already checked let's try font yeah, there's not much you can do as well but here you have the options bold, italic, underline, change font there's a font preview option 
you can protect the documents with password and it's probably very easy to crack so you're not really protecting anything but here is the option and close it I don't want to save the document the next program is Pocket Excel Pocket Excel reminds me a lot of Excel maybe before the last Excel for Windows 3.1 I think there was Excel 5 you have the basic functionality uh, on the top and nothing else there's probably some buttons hidden here and that's really weird because most devices have less resolution but you get basic the Excel view down here you can change sheets and you get the classic view of what happens when you have multiple cells selected and on the top the basic functionality of uh, you know manipulating files they are yeah editing with the replacement the usual classic options you can make the program full screen as well to save space when you have a lower resolution device you can you know, freeze, split you can format the cells, there should be some styles here it's actually quite powerful let's see what the options are, there are no options but I've heard that it supports the most used formula, so for example, one of the most useful ones that's a view lookup works. Um, this is the first application that I'm gonna thoroughly review, and this is one of the ones that makes this version of Windows C very, very special. Next one is PowerPoint. In theory, you can create slides and edit with them, but it's not very powerful in terms of functionality, and it is very, very slow. Yeah, so feature parity with PowerPoint 97, and in my opinion, Office 97 and 2000 were the last ones that actually had new useful features. Almost everything that came out afterwards bloat and crap, but you can connect to a full color display for presentations and annotate them live if you have a pen and this device doesn't so hey powerpoint i'm gonna also review this later on the last application on our list for office is access it comes with a sample database here northwind and it's surprisingly powerful by the look of it it comes with some sample data, right? For example, we have an employee list here, and we can probably yeah, some customers. But I don't know what's the use case for this because you can even do some SQL queries. I'm gonna play around with it later on when I review it. But honestly, what? Like, would you get the database offline, manipulate the data on the go and then reload somewhere? I guess the use case for an offline database application like Access has diminished it and I, I'm gonna ask around, but I really don't know what people would do with, with it these days. All right, what's next in your list? Let's explore the stuff menu. When we go to start, we are greeted with the classic options suspend. It basically suspends the device. It's very quick because this OS never turns off and everything is always in RAM. So when you push the power button, it turns on instantly. It's faster than any com modern computer. Run. Run loads the classic Windows 95 run window, even with the icon matching. If you type the name of a program folder or document, Windows will open it for you and you can browse your file system for items, yeah, for programs. And I think if you find a valid kind of document, it should open the associated... It doesn't. Well, I think there is some persistence, 
So if I move it here to where it is in Windows 95, it should stay, get out. Let's see if it does. No, it doesn't. Next option is help. Here I was hoping for a more Windows 95 style help system with, you know, the libraries and cascading items and, you know, a very nice index, but it's basically hypertexted uh, documents. So there are no screenshots, everything is text, and I honestly don't find it all that useful. It's basically an online version of the manual that comes with this device. Yeah, so even Windows C basics that should, you know, give you some screenshots if you're a new user. Um, no, there's nothing here. Yeah. Settings, then we have the control panel. And this is going to be interesting, so I'm going to get back to it later. Documents shows our recently opened documents, just like in Windows 95 or 2000 or so. Favorites, if you have browser favorites configured, then you can save them here and then launch the browser from here. Programs. Alright, so we have the basic Windows classic shell look with accessories on the top, Windows Explorer at the end, and we can go one by one. In accessories we have now the Microsoft calculator, not the cool one, let's see how it looks like. It doesn't look like the Windows 95 calculator at all, but you get the, how is it called, paper tape here, so the history of the operations you have done and you can switch to pop-up mode that's very small so you can probably move it on top of your document or so and copy the values and there is no scientific view as I can see so it's a very very simple calculator the next program will be Ink Writer this is probably here because it's part of the ROM of Windows CE itself but I don't think this would be very great without an actual touch screen and this device doesn't have one so aha uh -huh. well the items are in groups so I can probably rearrange that that's actually a cool feature but yeah it has some typing recognition here so if you write it will recognize it if you're writing it, it's going to smooth it. Yeah. Alright, my girlfriend had arrived, so I had to stop and greet her. Well, anyway. A bit useless without a pen, but you can do annotations using the keyboard, probably. I don't know why I would use that sort of use Microsoft Word if you have, you know, text editing application, but here we are. The next accessory then is Microsoft Voice Recorder. Um, I'm going to record a sample and extract the file for you to show you how it looks like during the detailed review. But for now, what can I say? You can create folders here probably and record your voice, make voice memos and the quality is for sure off. Let's have a look on the codec. So recording format, yeah, PCM. 8 kilohertz, the maximum is 22 kilohertz. Yeah, not great, but should do the job. Let's see here. Goodbye. Um, in options, yeah, you can choose the destination if you have an external card. You can, yeah, get the record button to do something. The record button is in front of the device. Uh, you can manage what you see in columns here and since this device has a quite wide screen for a handheld PC then well you can see everything there is no need to adjust the options in control playback controls are here play pause play sequential record a new one here you can create folders receive probably via infrared yeah that's I'm gonna test later on and exit, no big deal. Accessories, 
The world clock is probably the clock application. Yeah, it's just actually the options in the clock control panel panel. And you can add some list of series here and browse them again. Nothing really fantastic. Alright, next one. The next one is Citrix. And this won't work because well I would need a very old Citrix server to get this running and I may try to get it, you know, put something together this old version is probably available on the internet but now I don't have anything where to run it from so I cannot show it to you let's kill this just like Windows 95 Problems of response to responding, kill it. Let's see what's the communication. Here we have active sync. And I haven't connected this to a computer before, so active sync won't do anything. PC link. Yeah, you can probably do some use it for communicating elsewhere through the computer, I'm not sure. But and 150, 115k is not really that much, and it's not gonna work because it's not connected now. So we can just cancel. Next one will be remote networking. This should be interesting. The new connection wizard from Windows, and I can create a dial-up connection. Is the beauty mode or an infrared modem? And this is I'm gonna try or a serial modem connected to COM port. You can also configure the TCP IP settings. This version of Windows C doesn't support IPv6. Mm, this is not going to work because I don't have a phone line connected. Direct connection. This is something I will try using the infrared ports to connect to my provider. It should work just fine. But for now, Not much you can do here and browsing the internet at 90 kilobits per second is not gonna take me anywhere these days what do we have in the menus just the usual nothing special next one the terminal and this is yeah, to connect to some BBS probably via dial up. Uh, I probably cannot use a serial port here. I could maybe do a dumb force local. No. I'll explore it later, but if I can use this a serial console, it's gonna be very handy for me. Then we have Travel safe, and I have tried it. I don't know what it should be doing, so I'm not gonna go there again. In games, you have solitaire, and the classic window solitaire cards may be a bit smaller than they usually are, I'm not sure. And as you can see, it's dimensioned for 640 by 240 screens, I think, uh, and the rest just fills the screen with blanks. You have all the options, some of the card backs from Windows, just the same ones, the classic ones. Solitaire. It does the job of being solitaire, I guess. Uh, in Office, we already went through the applications, I'm going to review them in detail later on. Pocket Outlook we already checked, it's basically separate applications for Canada, contacts, inbox and tasks. The Audible Player we already checked, Compact Utility as well, well, everything else but Windows Explorer. And Windows Explorer looks like the basic my computer screen, my handheld PC screen, and you can go through folders. I really like this old style Windows with the full icons. 
it looks very pretty and you can still differentiate the file types because well, the icons are very characteristic. Uh, these days I tend to prefer in modern PCs to use um, the detail view which is available here but in general if I could get window, the newer versions of Windows to work consistently maybe my document folders I would prefer to have using this view mode Ah, uh, mistake What do we have of options? Looks like Windows 95, 98 can be a blend between 98 and 2000 and we get here in options just hiding extensions and you know hiding system files but nothing special Ah, you can load things on startup And one thing I find interesting here is a single user machine, so you get the desktop and the start menu shortcuts go here, just like in Windows 95, 98. Uh, even though I think Windows C can be a multi user uh, operating system, or I think it has different users, I'm not sure now.